So let me get this straight. You're a Sonic fan. You love Sonic music. You use YouTube. And you're not subscribed to my boy Hotline Sawani? AKA the dude that's been serving up the coldest Sonic the Hedgehog remixes. Listen to this, man. He's got the shit on Spotify, Apple Music, literally convenient as fuck for you to just take the shit on your phone, listen to these fire remixes. He's even got two collabs releasing this month with Madeline Wood, who sung on Sonic Forces tracks like Prison Hall or one of my favorites, Imperial Tower. And they'll also be raising $750 for the Homeless Children's Education Fund. So make sure to check out those tracks. And as a special thank you to my audience, Hotline Sawani will be giving away a $125 Amazon gift card to one lucky winner. And yes, Amazon has the Sonic. So if you want to enter this giveaway, make sure to check out Hotline Sawani's tracks. Leave the hashtag Pram sent me in this comment section. And of course, follow Hotline Sawani on Twitter. What do you think, the Sonic? Sweet, very nice. Just check out my boy Hotline Sawani. Make sure to subscribe to him. The link to his YouTube channel as well as all the other relevant links will be in the description. All right, so if you've been following the Sonic fan space on the internet, there's one term that you've undoubtedly heard many times this year, and that term is eating good. Sonic fans are eating good this year, and I decided to put that term to the test and compare the 30th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog to the 25th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog to answer the question once and for all, are we eating good or are we just eating whatever they throw at us? But if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure to subscribe. We are trying to hit 100K subscribe and I was just talking with my best friend, our Lord and Savior, the Sonic, and he said if Prairie and Remy doesn't hit 70k subs before Frontiers comes out, he's going to beat up everyone who didn't subscribe. Yeah. Should have subscribed yeah. to Prairie, Jeremy, bitch. And you know I can't control our Lord and Savior, right? So, I mean, for your own safety, like, you gotta subscribe to your boy, okay? So why this question in particular, right? There's plenty of anniversaries. Why can't we compare the 30th anniversary to any of the other ones? Well, okay, let's go through the anniversaries. The fifth one doesn't count. <laughs> it wasn't, we didn't even get shit. I mean, 3D Blast, I think, was that it? The 10th one, we got SA2, so we're not comparing it to that, come on. The 15th one, we're still not comparing it to that. I don't give a fuck if you hate 06, okay? <laughs> Listen, the amount of games we got in that year, and even right before the the year began like Rush and Shadow came out like November 05. The start of the year, we already had two games to play. And even if you didn't like 06, we got Riders, we got Rivals, Sonic X was still airing. Like, let's not disrespect, okay? 20th anniversary, we got Generations. So, again, we're not comparing the 30th anniversary to that. The only real contender here is the 20th anniversary. The two weakest anniversaries being compared for which one was better, essentially. Now, I know what you're thinking. Really, Prem? Weakest anniversary 25th? Didn't we get Sonic Mania? Now, this is where I want to like make a quick point. We are comparing anniversary years here, okay? So I don't want to get too in depth on the actual year after, right? I'm talking about the actual celebration year itself. What did we get? So when we compare to the 25th anniversary, don't think of Forces and Mania as complete finished games. What we're looking at is what we got within the year 2016 itself, which was a Mania trailer. So we did get gameplay of Mania in 2016, but we didn't have the game out yet. We we're just talking about the hype cycle. And then with Forces, at that point, it was still just Project 2017, no gameplay. Right when we got the debut announcement, you remember that trailer, right? We are literally comparing that to this year, which makes sense because I mean, with Frontiers, we know about it, but we're not getting the game until the year after the anniversary, which is why this comparison matches up, right? We're comparing games that weren't out at the time. 2016, where Forces of Mania went out, sorry, Project 2017 and Mania went out, to 2021, where Frontiers isn't out, where the movie sequel isn't out, where Prime isn't out. We know about things that aren't out yet. So if we go into this via categories, it's easy to see that when it comes to video games, we clearly got more in 2016 than 
2021 if we're to go with the new content of course because mania is essentially a new game okay it's full of old songs but it's more so a new game and that was shaping up to be pretty good in 2016 with the little amount of information we got with the trailer and the gameplay and project 2017 even though it disappointed us in 2017 in 2016 was seen as a ray of hope so it was still kind of seen as a good point i mean aside from obviously classic sonic's inclusion which we all detested <laughs> Okay, maybe not all of us detested it, clearly. But it was looking kind of bright, right, for 2016. To be fair, with Frontiers, everyone's so burnt by forces that people aren't willing to have the same level of hype. Because if we compare, like, what we got with Frontiers in December to the Project 2017 debut trailer, the Frontiers trailer actually does give us more. Obviously, the first trailer where they gave us no name back in May, that gave us nothing. But if we're comparing the December trailer to the original Project 2017 trailer, I would say we did get more with this Frontiers trailer, to be honest. And in that sense, I guess it looks like Frontiers is cooler than the original Project 2017 trailer. It's obviously just the fact that we're so burnt by forces that we're not willing to just cut them any slack. It's like, without gameplay, we ain't getting hype, basically. But with the direct comparison, I have to give that point to Frontiers. But then, 25th anniversary does have Mania again, and Mania really looked like a ray of hope in terms of this this looks good everyone knew it was gonna be good no one really doubted that it was gonna be good based on the gameplay we got we could see that the people that were working on it had a lot of heart and passion and they knew what they were doing and that was something that really got us excited the only real criticism we always had of mania from the beginning to the end was too many old zones and if that's the only criticism we can come up with then i would say you pretty much won right because the gameplay was solid the music was solid just talk about the trailer music because i don't think they started releasing all the music until like 2017 like on the channel but yes when it comes to video games i'm still Still going to give the win to the 25th anniversary because yes i think the frontiers trailer did look better than the project 2017 trailer but when we compare sonic mania's trailer to whatever we got this year which was colors ultimate I still think the Mania trailer wins. We had way more faith in Mania, and Carla's Ultimate, which got announced and released this year, was a bit of a dud, let's be real, it was a bit of a dud, it induced some seizures. Now, to be fair, they are patching it, I know Tube has been covering that, I couldn't be bothered to cover it because it's Colors, but they are working on it. Personally, I wasn't the biggest fan of Colors, but even if you remove my own personal biases, Mania did perform better than Colors if we're going off like the scores of the people and the scores of the critics. Although Colors may have sold more, I'm not sure on the actual sales, but if we're comparing Comparing those two things, Project 2017's first trailer and Sonic Mania's initial trailers in 2016 to the Frontiers trailers we got in 2021, as well as Colors Ultimate, not really including Origins because it's just a port that didn't show any gameplay, I have to say that 2016 takes the cake for this one. Side note, I even forgot about other games that came out in 2016, like... <laughs> Mario and Sonic are the real 2016 Olympic Games. I played a little bit of that. I actually did a full playthrough of the 3DS. I completely forgot. I did a playthrough of the 3DS version on my channel, like literally. And that was actually a decent game. And um, Sonic Boom, Fire and Ice, I think was the best boom game by far. I really enjoyed that. I did a playthrough of that and no one watched it, but I paid for a capture card and everything. Back then I was broke and I still pay for that capture card. The point is, we actually got way more stuff in 2016 than we got in 2021. I completely forgot, I literally punched this one in. But yeah, like 2016 definitely wins when it comes to games, clearly. Which then leaves other media. Now, when it comes to like multimedia, pretty much I think 2021 has got this one covered. I mean, I've been saying this for the longest time that ever since Forces flopped, they've been doubling, tripling down on multimedia because they know that they can't rely on the games to be quality like they used to. So they've been going ham. Like 2021, we got the movie trailer and it looked really good. Knuckles was in there with Idris Elba. Tails was there with Cole lean like jim carrey doing his thing like we didn't know anything about the first movie back in 2016 i think there were rumblings even back then that we were getting a movie i think there was even a few leaks of early scripts and shit like that but like we didn't really know shit about the movie back then so if we're comparing on the movie front obviously 2021 wins that if we add tv shows to the mix 2016 the sonic boom cartoon was still airing and that was a great show so it does get points for that whereas when it comes to tv shows in 2021 all we know is that we're getting sonic prime and while it is looking prime promising based on what we've heard so far we haven't actually gotten any trailer or something like that to really see what it's gonna look like and the voices so i can't really give the points to sonic prime even though i 
think Sonic Prime has the potential to be way better than Boom because it sounds like it's going to be a little bit more serious than what Sonic Boom was, which was, you know, full meta. And while I'm not the biggest fan of the meta era, I do think Boom is, at least the TV show Boom, is the best that the meta era had to offer in terms of story. I'm not saying much, but, you know, it was at least decently funny. Probably Roger's best work as Sonic, if you ask me. But I'm going to have to give the win to 2021 again because big budget movie on the way and we got a trailer and it looked good. And let's be real, the budget of the trailer was probably higher than the budget of the entire Boom cartoon. So 2021 gets that multimedia win. And then we have miscellaneous stuff, like just little bonus extras and shit like that. And I'm going to keep it real with you, Chief. I don't really remember most of the fuck extra shit came out in 2016. Like I, I've actually forgotten. Like 2021's more recent, so I remember shit like all the franchises that Sonic was shoehorning himself into to leverage their clout and be in games that were actually doing well. Like it was in Fall Guys and was that this year? I don't even remember if that was this year. Sonic was in like Puyo Puyo. He was in Ninjala. He was in a bunch. Of, I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. I don't, I don't want to give points for that, but I have to mention it, right? I mean, there was a ton, a ton of merch. There was an Encyclopedia, which mine still hasn't arrived. I'm pretty sure I ordered that ages ago. Wasn't that supposed to come out by now? The fuck? I did buy a limited edition Sonic Heroes poster, though. That was nice. But we didn't get any, like, Sonic vinyls this year or anything like that. We got the Adventure 1 and 2 vinyls, like, years ago. I was hoping that we'd get, like, Heroes or 06 or something. On the I don't know, but, like, they're stacking a bit on that front. I guess we could include the events as well for comparison like miscellaneous i mean 2016 we got like a full like party where they revealed forces and mania or project 2017 and mania whereas in 2021 we got a sonic central event which was like obviously a live stream wasn't a physical event given what's going on i don't know which one i prefer i mean i guess physical events are more interesting in that sense and i still watch them at home anyway so i don't know i feel like i shouldn't give a concrete score for this miscellaneous point because i don't remember a lot of what happened in 2016 it's not really very easy to google all the miscellaneous things that happened in 2016 for Sonic so we're not going to give this one an official ranking but I think I would have to lean towards 2021 just because the music concert was so great I mean Steve Aoki delivered an amazing performance of Sonic Remix and other songs that were I'm joking <laughs> the, the Sonic Symphony was great okay it was an amazing symphony I still think they shafted a lot of the adventure era in the symphony section or in the orchestral section I mean I know they were saving it for Crush 4 but I would have loved to hear a lot of those songs in the orchestra part but in terms of musical performances for video games this is pretty much as decent as it gets okay so when comparing 2016 to 2021 i mean it's a very close call i mean multimedia is clearly leaning towards 2021 as well as the miscellaneous stuff like merch and all that other shit but when it comes to video games i think 2016 clearly took the cake with mania being a big highlight everyone was hyped for it even before the game came out just based off the gameplay project 2017 showed promise but didn't look as interesting as say a frontiers trailer but at least they didn't have Carla's ultimate to deal with plus they had olympic games they had fire and ice but again we're, we're comparing two of the weakest anniversaries here so like it's not really like i'm trying to sell you on the 25th anniversary or anything like that like uh, believe me i'm not my favorite anniversaries are still like anything from the 10th to the 20th really like 10th 20th 15th i know people didn't like 15th that's just my personal opinion obviously but of course i always miss that onslaught of content we used to get which kind of makes it really funny when people be like sonic fans are eating good right now and i'm like i get it like a lot of younger fans you know fans who got into the series when roger was already voicing sonic when they were kids like they don't remember that time when we were actually getting an onslaught of content so they think that getting a game announcement with no gameplay plus a bunch of merchandise and miscellaneous stuff and multimedia counts as eating good i mean i don't really think it does you know like i, I could point to non-anniversary years in the 2000s where we got more content than anniversary years right now like in 2005 we got like sonic rush we got shadow the hedgehog we were still getting sonic x if you want to include mobile games we got like a sonic jump game. i didn't play that shit so i don't even want to include it but sonic gems collection came out like literally we could play sonic the fighters again like you know and that was just a regular year right like marvel in 2021 is a perfect example of when it's actually appropriate to say we are eating good like the amount of shows they got like wonder vision hawkeye loki what if Falcon and Winter Soldier, like, I don't even know if I mentioned all of them because, like, there's so many that, like, literally, they got the Shang-Chi movie, they got Black Widow, they got Spider-Man No Way Home, like, this is the definition of eating good, right? Like, that, that's eating good, okay? What Sonic fans are getting is, like, a prisoner who's been eating prison food for how long? And then one of their cellmates smuggles in some McDonald's and they're like, oh, we eating good today, <laughs> like, we got that Big Mac, like... 
Like compared to the prison food, a Big Mac is like filet mignon. Like what the fuck? But it's still just a Big Mac. Like I could go for a Big Mac right now. But the, the point is, okay, we will see if these things come to fruition next year. I mean, the things that haven't come out yet, like the movie, like Prime, like Frontiers. We'll see if they continue to patch Colors Ultimate or if they're done. So 2022 is going to be a very interesting year. And at the end of 2022, we will do the post anniversary year comparison since the 25th anniversary basically did the same thing and said a lot of these things are coming out in 2017 so we will do the 2017 versus 2022 to really conclude my full opinions on everything but as it stands right now i don't even want to declare a proper winner to this it's just like they're both some of the weakest years but depending on what you value more what kind of media you want more versus games or merch or multimedia whatever will determine which side you lean towards but yeah let me know what you guys think about this topic which anniversary do you think was stronger 2016 or 2021 and you cannot use forces gameplay because that came out 2017 we are comparing the years and points in time we're not comparing the actual info because if we actually look at forces the full game it was a flop and frontiers hasn't come out yet so you could be like well forces was a flop and frontiers will be amazing and it's like well we haven't actually seen frontiers yet so that's why we are comparing the pre-gameplay stages do you think we're eating good right now do you think we we're eating good then and are you looking forward to 2022 as a sonic fan but yeah make sure to like comment subscribe hit that bell make sure to check out the non sonic channel the link will be in the description but that's all i have to say right now so do remy out